Hi, I'm Heather from HeadBuckTubes and I'm here to complain. I actually had to dig my tripod out because I thought that I was done filming for the year. But I was talking to Rob in the paperbacks and planners last night and then I was watching Jess's video, Jess Owens, today about, you know, what we want to see more of in BookTube of 2024. And that was a great video. Love that video. So I was ranting to Robin about this last night and I was like, I might make a video. And I slept on it. I did all my cleaning this morning, I took a shower, I relaxed, I drank coffee, I ate, not hangry, still thinking about making this video. <laughs> so I'm going to. I might decide to scrap it during editing, but I'm going to make it. So I've been watching so many 2024 goals and of course, what is on my face? I don't know. I'm out of my lotion and I have to like use a different one. Because I'm not going to the store because it's Christmas weekend and I hate it. <laughs> but anyways, I've been watching 2024 goals. Also, yes, I'm sick and the videos that you're seeing the next couple of times were pre-filmed. So I'm sick again. <laughs> Go me. So many people are talking about how in 2024 they really want to control their book buying habit. <clears throat> My husband called me, so we're back. <laughs> Um, so many of you are talking about how you don't want to buy as many books, you want to read what you own, you want to not be reading for videos or to read for enjoyment outside of videos, you want to slow down your content posting, you want to slow down your consumption, you want to get back to the joy of reading, you want to really read things that are your taste and not just popular, or you're talking about how it's too much, it's all too much and it's really affecting you. And I just cannot help but notice that a lot of you are making yourself do things for booktube that are completely unnecessary. You don't have to do it, babe. You don't have to do it. It's all optional. In the words of Olivia Rodrigo, you're the one making the bed. You're taking all the things that you enjoy and you're making it something that you dread. Like you are not having a good time because you are not putting your reading first. You're making booktube your entire life. A lot of people cannot financially afford the book buying habit that they are creating because of booktube. And like, you don't have to do that. If you can't afford it, like, that's fine. I'm not policing how you spend your money. I don't care at all. But if you can't afford it, you don't have to do it. If it doesn't bring you enjoyment, you don't have to do it. All of this is optional. Number one, you can quit booktube. <laughs> like, I'm so serious. You can quit. People quit all the time. Don't sacrifice yourself to the algorithm gods who will take everything that you have and still want more. You will burn yourself out trying to please them when they cannot be appeased. Do not sacrifice yourself for YouTube because when you are nothing but a dried out husk, the community will just go right over your back. They'll just keep on going. The algorithm doesn't care about you. Don't sacrifice yourself for the algorithm. Don't make videos that you hate for the algorithm. You know, I understand if this is your main source of income that some things change, right? But for most people, you're sacrificing something that you love, your enjoyment of reading in the name of views and pennies and it's just not worth it. Like at all, you're not getting a good bang for your buck. You don't have to post on multiple platforms. In fact, I would argue that you can only really post on one. I would say that you have room for three things and reading has to be one of those things. So for me, it's reading booktube and reading journal. That's all I can spend any significant amount of time on. I can't do bookstagram and book talk. I cannot be a contributor really on book Twitter. I can consume those things and I do, but in order to create content on those things, I can't, I can't do that. I don't have that sort of time. And I have a lot of time, honestly, to give to book things. I do. I would say I have above average for sure. Like I watch booktube all day as I'm working on other stuff. Booktube is like the background <laughs> on my life right now. I mean, I have a lot of time and I don't have time for all that. And if you do, you probably have help in areas and or it's just not maintainable. Like it's too much. It's too much for all of us. 
We know this. If you've watched BookTube for any length of time, you've seen creator after creator after creator talk about how it's too much, talk about how burned out they are, talk about how they don't like that they have 500 books that they haven't read. They don't like that they are only reading the books that fit into their video ideas and concepts. They don't like that they are spending all day filming and editing and working on BookTube and the rest of their life is non-existent. Like, if you've been around for any length of time, you've seen many people say this. So how is it surprising that it's now happening to you when you are doing the exact same thing? You don't have to do it all. Don't make the video. If your schedule's full, just cancel those suckers out. You don't want to read that book? DNF it. You don't want to make booktube content anymore? Quit. You do want to make booktube content but it's too much? Change your posting schedule. It's all made up. It's all things that you made up. All these expectations, all of it, you can change at any point. And you know what? There are some of my favorite creators I want them to be making videos forever, but I care more about them as a person than I care about them as a creator. Uh, top of mind is Ashley at Bookish Realm because she's been talking for about as long as I've been watching her about how the time for her booktube channel is coming to a close, right? And I do not want her to stop making videos. <laughs> I want her to make videos for literally the rest of my life. I love watching her videos, but I love Ashley the person more than I do Ashley the creator. And if what is best for her is to stop making videos, then I want her to do that. Even though I'm not going to lie, it fills me with dread. It makes me sad. I'm like, no, no, like I, I need, but the reality is I don't need right if ashley stops making videos which would like i'm i'm like dear god I, I would be sad i'd be sad but if ashley stops making videos there's still videos for me to watch not with her insight not with her style not with everything that makes her such a gem in this community but there's still content to consume and i want ashley and her baby girl to thrive whether i see that on booktube or not right so even if i want you to make videos you can quit are you going through it right now are, are we not all going through it but are you really going through some difficult things you don't have to maintain content at the same pace as you always did i don't think that we as a community should encourage suffering for the sake of book two i don't think we should encourage buying books and reading as a means to manage mental health that needs some actual help <laughs> and I know like therapy d does insurance cover it or not if it doesn't cover it you're probably completely out of luck right like all of those things but we as a community I feel like a lot of times pretend like these things are uh normal and they're not. You're not supposed to be buying thousands of dollars worth of books in a year. Reading hundreds of books is normal for plenty of people who are not part of the book community. But is it your normal? For me, my reading is my normal. Like, I don't have to try to achieve that. But are you burning yourself out? trying to maintain a reading pace that's really not your natural reading pace at all. It's okay to not be a content creator. It's okay to stop being a content creator. It's okay to make content that's not popular. It's okay to be a small channel. It's okay to watch your growth kind of stall out and not really get to where you want it to be. The reality is I believe this. I preach this all the time, but one, it's okay to quit. It's okay to DNF and also Read the books that you like reading and make the videos that you like making and watch the people that you like watching and the videos that you like watching. You don't have to do any of this that isn't actually the best part for you. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to do it. And you know, if you're like, oh, I wish people would make this content. I wish then watch the people that do that. You complain about diversity on booktube, but then you don't watch the people who read diversely. You don't watch the creators who are marginalized. You don't watch the people who make the content that you are clamoring for. <laughs> like we find each other. 
I watch people who don't make the most popular videos and some of them do. Some of the people that I watch are really popular because if I like watching you, what do I care what your following count is? I don't care if you have a hundred subscribers or a hundred thousand. If I like your videos, I'm watching your videos. And I just don't understand why so many of you are watching people you don't like are following people you don't like, are watching content that you then complain. Like, don't watch book hauls. I don't, I don't watch book hauls. Why? Because I think they're boring. I don't think that they are morally wrong. I don't think that you are a problem if you make them, but I think they're boring, so I don't watch them. Like, all of it's optional. And I just wish that some of you would get a grip and would understand that all of this, all of these problems, are not real problems. You can stop these at any point. Mental health, financial struggles, all of that, that can really play into booktube burnout are real <laughs> and are not always as easily manageable. But the booktube part, you can do whatever you want on booktube. None of this is required. And I wish that more of you would just do the stuff that makes you happy and leave the rest alone. You don't have to take bookstagram photos and post on book to talk. You don't have to know all the new releases. You don't have to read any new releases. Read backlist. Read from the library. Read from Kindle Unlimited. You don't have to spend any money on booktube. <laughs> you know, and you don't have to spend any time you don't want and whatever you like, there are people making it. There are people making it. If you don't like the typical booktube um, content, watch Ray at Bookmark Chronicles. Watch Vita at Miss WOC Reader. Watch Bree at Locked Booktition. Like, I, like they exist. <laughs> so anyways, this is not aimed at any one person at all. Because again, like if you're making the videos that you want to make, and you're spending the money that you want to spend and you're reading the books that you want to read. I'm happy for you whether that lines up with my taste or not. It's just preference. I don't care. Enjoy it. But if you're not enjoying it, you don't have to do it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.